Uh, you are a better fan than me. I couldn't get behind the new Silent Hill games. They lost me after four. Yeah, I'm not going to say I love them by any means, but I certainly played and owned them all. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, Silent Hill 3 is my favorite, Neko says. Sometimes it lands on zero, <laughs> Grifter says. Uh, you know what, Neko? I actually never played 3. Maybe I will tomorrow. Uh, 3, if you'll like 3. 3 is really nice because um, 3 is like a direct sequel to the first game. I won't spoil anything for you, but it's a direct sequel to the first game, and it is fantastic. I think it, it wraps things up really nicely. Um... And I think it puts the characters... It hits you with some curveballs with the, with the main characters. Um, from from one and stuff. So, I think you'll like it. Let me know what you think. If you play it tomorrow, I'll keep an eye out. Because the reason we're streaming tonight is so I don't have to stream tomorrow. Because I want to just rest tomorrow. I still may stream tomorrow night, possibly. But I, I, I'm working on a novel right now. And I am way behind on it. So, I need to focus on that and get that done. So, tomorrow I want to, like, lay in bed and sleep. And then, if I, but if I don't sleep, I just want to work on that stuff. That's why I shot all my YouTube videos that I'm going to post tomorrow. I shot them all yesterday um, on my day off. Because I was just like, let's get them over with. Let's, let's get them all done. I can just edit them and post them on Christmas. Um... Neko says, I love the first time I played 4, but the stress of uh, saving Eileen makes it really hard for me to play it over again. I will say, Silent Hill 4 is, I cannot replay now that I have anxiety and panic attacks. You're right about the Eileen thing. I can't do it. I get so invested in that game, and I really like the characters a lot. I can't, you're right, that is, I cannot go through it again. Luckily, I only have an X-Bone, so I can't even play the old games. I stream everything just through the X-Bone. Um... So yeah, luckily, luckily I don't have that have to face that and make those decisions. The four games that Team Silent did are so interwoven with each other. That's part of why I love them so much. Well, then you should definitely check out Twin Perfect's Real Silent Hill Experience uh, video series. If you go to their channel, I think they have a playlist for Real Real Silent Hill Experience, and it's like 22 videos long. Some of them are six minutes, seven minutes long, and some of them are like 20 minutes long. Fantastic! If you love Silent Hill and the Team Silent games, you're gonna love their channel. It's amazing. Um, more power. That's uh, also why I was super bummed when they switched direction. Uh, for sure. Well, they hired that one guy who came in um, during Silent Hill Homecoming. And apparently he is one of the reasons. He was like a producer. He's one of the reasons that all the games went to crap, apparently. Ten years ago, Dr. Marcus Remember trying the demo to Silent Hill on the Vita? That was bad. <laughs> oh, the demo. On the Vita? <laughs> For Silent Hill 1? Or was it Silent Hill, like the dungeon crawler Silent Hill game? Because that game is awful. All right, we haven't done this yet. Let's go save. There's a typewriter. I know. I'm looking. There's the ink ribbon right there, yo. Uh, I am. When I heard about the Venom film, I was all over that. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Martian. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, me too. Once I heard Tom Hardy was going to be in it, that is what made me take interest. I was like, oh, okay. Because at first they were like, oh, we're making a Venom movie, but with no Spider-Man. I was like, what? Sony, god dang, how many people do you have over there smoking crack? <laughs> and then uh, and then apparently uh, they got the good crack because they were like, oh, we're going to, Tom Hardy's going to play Eddie Brock. I was like, wait, what? And they're like, oh yeah, and Michelle Williams is in it. I'm like, what? And like, yeah, and Je Jenny Slate and Riz Ahmed. I'm like, what? <laughs> and it's being directed by the guy who made Zombieland. And I was like, shut up. Like, <laughs> and the guy who wrote Gone in 60 Seconds and um, and Disturbing Behavior and like all these other weird movies I liked in Con Air. I'm like, oh my God. Okay. I'm like, he's like one of the three writers on it. But I'm just like, I have to, I have to learn more about this movie. And then once I started learning more about it, I found a way to make a vlog series out of it. And uh, yeah, just hilarious. Just hilarious. Um, I think we're going to keep that on us. You know what we can drop, though? We can drop this stupid gun. Also, Seek, that's a pretty neat idea for fan fiction. Yeah, I had, um... I had, uh, really contemplated... Because I was talking... At, at that point, I think IDW had the, the rights to Silent Hill comic books. But they had already hired, like, this guy named Scott Ciencin... Um, and they, he was already like contracted to write like the first, you know, so many books or whatever. So, uh, it never went anywhere, but, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, I had this script for Joseph Schreiber and 
this journal. I've always wanted to write stories about a journalist. And I was like, oh, this is great. I could do a journalist and a Silent Hill story at the same time. And it fits into continuity. And it's about this guy who's invo- uh, looking into the cult. And you have some of the story take place during Silent Hill um, 1 and 3, like in that time period. And then uh, and then him learning about, like, like basically what's going to be the plot of Silent Hill 4. Um, and then and then and then being, you know, the evil coming after him and, uh, you know, basically going after him in his own apartment uh, and then turning his apartment into like a prison cell for him of demons and stuff. And it was like I, I had this whole thing mapped out. I'm not saying it was good or anything. I just I, I really was like into telling that story. Um, all right, we're going to drop this. I do not need two shotties. That's the biggest thing about this game is that uh, conservation of uh, space, uh, especially for speedrunners. Uh, you cannot you cannot really pick up anything superfluous. It's like, all right, we're gonna I'm just gonna have this and I'm gonna run through it with the whole game. Um, the Silent Hill comics were a letdown for the most part, uh, and the Demon Baby Shudder. Oh yeah, for sure. Tom Hardy faint. <laughs> um, that's exactly what I found when I was playing it again for stream. I got to saving her, and I just couldn't deal with it. Oh, I hear you. I hear you with the Eileen stuff. Come on, Eileen. Oh, Sorry. That song would have brightened that game up a little bit. Oh, no! You know what? We can... I like this thing that they added in. Use. That way you don't even have to pick them up. Which makes so much sense. You're like, yeah, okay. I don't need these games to be super realistic, but when you see a plant that can heal you and you have full inventory, you should still be able to use the dang thing and rub like rub the plant on you or something. Um, uh, I wish they would do a remaster of Silent Hill 1. Just polish it up. Don't change anything else. It's just hard to look at now, but once you start playing, man, the nostalgia, the radio's just flipping creepy. And those demon babies. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. You should check out, like I said, the Twin Perfect channel. They'll actually tell you like who the demon babies originally were supposed to be. Uh, like that, like they, they had like all these, all these cut concepts and things that you know they didn't use and stuff. And I'm telling you that that series is fantastic. I can't even remember where we're really supposed to go now. I just always remember we have to start with that ha that first hallway we went through. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Silent Hill Book of Memories. That was for the Vita. Oh yeah, that game sucked. <laughs> oh, a twofer. Nice. Oh yeah, I never messed with Book of Memories. Don't apologize. I sang the I sing that every time I was creeping on her through the hole in the wall. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that game like really puts you in the shoes of of Henry Townsend. They're just like, "All right, we're going to make you you're going to be a creep. Like you're going to play this guy who's kind of a creep." And the the game almost instigates you to be more creepy so they tell you like go look in the hole see what she's doing oh she's changing clothes keep looking in the hole. you know and it's like and it affects things in the game and it affects like you know uh like you as a player and it's it's really it's awesome <laughs> it's uh it's it's hard to do that in a game and i think team silent like really rocked it i like four a lot i mean people i it's still my it's my third favorite because i would say one and three are tied for a second but very closely behind two. I like two a lot, and I think that's just because I'm a big fan of Jacob's Ladder. Um, I really like that. Uh, I think I was supposed to find the handle. Yeah. Um, I really like J Jacob's Ladder. It's like one of my top like ten favorite movies. So when I played that game, I just got a very Jacob's Laddery feel from it, and always really appreciated that. Um, uh, I will. I have already pulled up the channel. I'm gonna check it out while I uh, wrap presents for the kiddos. That moment you look through the hole and Robbie the rabbit is looking back at you. I know that is some creepy shit. Um, yeah, you like your. There's this hole in the wall and you're looking through, looking at this this girl in the next room, trying to get her. You're really trying to get her attention because you're screaming like, "Hey, help me, help me!" And, and you're you're in like another dimension. Um, in, in like a in silent. You're trapped in the darkness of Silent Hill or whatever, so you can't like get her attention. It's just great stuff. Um, uh, 
Uh, so yeah, so you're really trying to get her attention, but it's not working. But yeah, then there's this one time you look through the hole and there's just like this rabbit with blood on its mouth and it's just sitting on the bed looking at you. It's like, uh, oh, hello, rabbit. Can't remember if these doors are locked because I know we have to set like a clock. Like I remember things in this game, but I don't remember the order of them. I am too. I love Jacob's Ladder. I think the reason I like Silent Hill 3 the most is I really connected with Harry and Cheryl. Oh, yes. Well, and also I liked her. I liked her character in 3 a lot. Like, she was great. Um, oh, here's the handle. Okay. Oh, thank you, Billy. Goodbye. Uh, did you know they're remaking Jacob's Ladder? I got invited to see a screening of it like a couple months ago and I couldn't go because of work and I was really bummed by it. <laughs> I really, really wanted to go. Um, sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make Billy do this because, you know, I like playing as Rebecca. I don't like Billy at all. In the room, the floating men still scared the living crap out of me. Oh, dude, I'm... They scared the shit out of me, too, dude. Oh, there was a lot of things. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie called The Frighteners. Um, it's this great Peter Jackson movie he made well before um, um, Lord of the Rings. And uh, it has it stars... Um, oh, I'm blanking on his name. The guy from Back to the Future. Uh, uh, the main character. Uh, Marty McFly. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. It's like I'm so tired. I, I can't think of his name right now. Um, but he's like the star of it. And uh, wait, what? There we go. I thought I could control her and get her to move the way I wanted it, but it wasn't happening. Here we go. Um, Michael J. Fox, that was his name. Um, oh, yeah, okay, good. Michael J. Fox, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I knew I'm not holding out any hope it is with the horror remakes, but I really want it to be good. I hear you. Yeah, Michael J. Fox. So The Frighteners is this movie starring Michael J. Fox. It's, it's a Peter Jackson movie. And... Uh, and basically the um, the premise, I guess, of it is that it's uh, this guy who named Jacob Barley, I think, and he killed, um, oh man, am I missing the minute hand and everything? Um, he killed like, uh, uh, like 13 people or something like that. He was like a serial killer. He killed 13 people and then he died. And then what happens is like this Grim Reaper shows up and it starts uh, killing people in the town and doing the same thing, Jacob Jacob Barley like carved numbers in his victim's head, and he stopped at like thirteen or something like that. Then all of a sudden, this um, this uh, Grim Reaper uh, CGI creature shows up in town that only Michael J. Fox can see because he um, had a near death experience, so he um, he can see this Grim Reaper, and uh, and he's like. Uh, trying to track it down and this grim reaper is killing people and carving numbers in their head uh picking up right where jacob barley left off so it's like number 14 was like the first victim and stuff so yeah uh good movie very good movie yeah frighteners was good i can't believe they're remaking jacob's ladder yeah they are and it's uh I mean, so far from what I've seen it, like, and I could have seen it like, like two months ago and I, I totally couldn't cause of work. Um, uh, oh yeah. We got to go unlock the door. Uh, 
Um, but yeah, so uh, Frighteners, if you haven't seen it, it's it's fantastic. I don't know if it holds up to today. The special effects probably certainly don't. Uh, but it's a very fun movie to watch. And um, Michael J. Fox is great in it. So that's kind of the premise of um, the killer in uh, in Silent Hill 4. He's this guy who um, is uh, killing people and carving numbers in their heads. And then he died. And then he comes back as like a spirit. Um to to um finish what he started so it's it's very similar um to the frighteners in that regard which is probably why i like silent hill 4 a lot more than most people do because i like the frighteners uh you know i never watched frighteners gonna have to fix that i'm a horror head effects on older horror movies don't bother me i wouldn't even call it a horror movie it's it's horror in the sense of like army of darkness is horror like it's um certainly has elements of horror in it for sure but there's a, a, a there's some there's comedy too obviously it's michael j fox so they probably wanted like hey be lighthearted, be funny um be kind of slapsticky at times so that's kind of the route yeah. they go um with it and uh, it works though it works for the movie the movie is great the way it is but it, ha it does have this delicate balance of horror and and fun because it's uh, I think it was like a PG or PG thirteen movie. I'll go check over there. Okay. Okay. I'm doing my Jack Nicholson voice. Okay. Yes. Oh, I hate this. So again, the game just being like, well, we want Rebecca to be the damsel in distress. So she can't operate the machine because she's just a woman. <laughs> and it's like, all right, Mr. Man with the tattoos and the muscles. I think it's time for you to operate the machinery because Rebecca's not a genius student who is a mechanic, not a mechanic, but a medic for the team. She wouldn't know how to work a machine. And I get it. I'm, I'm just, fuck. I'm just fucking around. But um, I get it. It's like, it's a lot of weight, and you know, whatever. She's a small girl. I totally get it. I know why. At least in this instance, why it is that. And he has to hold it steady. So, makes sense. It's fine. But it's just when it's on top of like moments in the game that you, that Rebecca doesn't need to do something like that. Then you're kind of, it kind of is like, all right, guys, couldn't you given her one? Like she, she can't even play the piano in this game. In the Resident Evil 1, she's the one who plays the piano to solve the puzzle. In this game, she's like, piano? What's that? <laughs> and then Billy's like, I can do it. And he goes over and he's like, look at my fingers go. I can play the piano. And just like, whatever, dude. Um, it's dark comedy. I put him in the same boat, mostly. Um, I couldn't save Cynthia at the beginning of 4. Oh, Cynthia. That's a tough one. Um, I liked all the characters in 4. I really did that, like those characters. They left an impression on me. There we go. Um... Like Dead Alive is a dark comedy, but called horror. Yeah, okay, yeah. Actually, Dead Alive is a good example. Are you all right? Um, yes. Grifter says, "Yeah, but levers heavy, unga unga." No, I know. <laughs> so basically, what you're telling me is Rebecca is a savant and learned how to play the piano from Billy just to save Chris's dumb ass. Pretty much. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. Thanks for picking up what I'm putting down. All right. Oh, we have the red door key now. Okay, great. All right, and maybe in about like 10 more minutes, we're going to end this episode with um, the with us opening the last three gifts that we have uh, for Christmas. Uh, and then after that, I probably really will stop the stream uh, just for like five minutes, just so I can go get a drink and then use the restroom. 
and then I'll come back with, I'll come back and I'll, I'll stop and start it immediately, but then I'll just be off camera like getting all that stuff. And then I'll, I'll come back in and we'll play like another hour and a half of this. Cause I'm, I'm locked in. I want to, I want to keep going. Um, all right, let's see. First we'll go to this red door over here. Over here. Um, Martian cats, <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, so there was this red door. There was the red door down in the kitchen. I think that's where we get the lighter fluid. Um, probably should have gone there first, but that's okay. Well, um, I think this room doesn't have much in it, so we'll knock it out real quick. I think now that we have the fire door key, too, I think uh, the Marcus clone shows up, and he's, like, whipping his arms around. Uh, because of Res 1, Moon Knight Sonata is my favorite classical song. That's so funny. Mine too. Absolutely. Same same exact reason and everything. Uh, I love that song. And uh, and even try to learn it a couple times uh, in my life. Just being like, oh, dude, Resident Evil. People are like, why are you so interested in this song? Like, don't you want to learn any other songs in a piano? I'm like, nope. Resident Evil. <laughs> uh, you never know when I'm going to be stuck in a room one day and I have to play it to open a trap so I can change out some... Uh, crests <laughs> I was going to say is there anything in this room that's useful and I think this is the only thing it's the um, the minute key I can't remember I think one of these files tells us what time to set it at um Not, not it. All right, well, we got what we came for. Let's uh, get the F out of here. Uh, off to bed. Get plenty of rest tomorrow and hope everyone has a safe and happy holiday. Phantom YouTube, thank you for the four ninety nine subscription. I really, really appreciate that, dude. Thank you so much. Everyone, send some love to Phantom um, while I walk into this wall here uh, gracefully with Rebecca. Um, yeah, dude, definitely. I will do my best tomorrow to get rest. I'm going to be up late tonight, but that's just so I can, you know, hopefully exhaust myself to the point where I will sleep in tomorrow. Later, Phantom uh, Grifter says, uh, Neko says, uh, yeah, I think I fell in love with that song because of that as well, for sure. Have a great holiday, Phantom. See you, Phantom Power says. Nice. Thank you guys for that. Phantom's a good dude. What's that? Four months, three, four months in a row you've subscribed here, dude? Um, and then Grifter, six months in a row at $24.99. Dude, I cannot thank you enough for that. Um, it really means a lot to me. And the controller. It, like We're pretty much able to stream these past few weeks because of the controller that um, that Grifter sent to us, uh, donated to the channel. So, again, Grif, dude, thank you so much. Oh, snap. I like when you shoot their heads off and the bodies still like take an extra step or two and you hear like their squishy like feet like and I'm like, oh, it's still around. It's oh, and I'm like, I blew his head off. All right, we're just here for lighter fluid. Does Billy have the lighter? I think Billy does. Of course, Billy has the lighter because every other stars member has a lighter except Rebecca. Nope, I'm going to mix this. All right, where do we use the fire? I think we can use it on the Molotov cocktails, um, but I think there's actually a puzzle. Oh yeah, in the um, in the study upstairs. Okay, we gotta run back up there. Nope. Sometimes these old school game mechanics like screw me up. I'm like, oh whoa. Um. You rock, Grifter. Grifter, uh, meh, meh. Grifter, eh, eh. <laughs> so humble, so modest. <laughs> um, she's 19. She can't possibly have a lighter, and I think Jill didn't have one either. She finds one. Um, oh, that's true. Yeah, I guess. So what you're saying is the women don't get lighters. I gotcha. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Jill, because Jill had something else, right? She started with a gun and a knife, and Chris started with a knife and a lighter. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And I think Jill could carry more things because she had like her utility pouch on her, and Chris. Uh, had apparently nothing or lost I think in the book they described actually something like that and the, they actually went out of their way like S.D. Perry and one of the I think the novel the first game mentioned that Chris like his pouch of like extra ammo he left on the helicopter he was like alright I don't we might not need it we're gonna we were just gonna go and inspect and then circle back and uh, and then when we circled back Brad took off from the helicopter um, so yeah they actually explained that Oh, and we also have the hand, so we can go put that in there, too. Forgot we got the clock hand. Because I know where we got to go. It's There's this room downstairs that we got to go put these microfiche things in. Um, but I just don't want to go down there yet, because I don't think we have everything that we need in order to go down there. Uh, Jill got the lock picks. Oh, that's right. Uh, Neko says, us women folk can't be trusted with lighters. <laughs> Because she wasn't a meathead. Uh, damn that chicken heart, Vickers. Oh, yes. I think in the novel they called him chicken shit, Vickers. I don't think S.D. Perry uh, cared too much about censorship. Which is weird that chicken heart was his name. Because I was like, just call him chicken shit. Like, that's like an old school term. When I Every time I think of um, Resident Evil 1, I actually think of um, Predator 1. The movie Predator. Uh, it opens very similarly. It opens with a military team on a helicopter going into a situation that they are not prepared for. Uh, they think they're going in for one reason, and they actually get pulled into something completely different. So um, another reason why I'm very fond of the first Resident Evil and why it hooked me instantly was because of uh, was because of that revelation of like I'm like oh my god this opens just like Predator. Uh, that's fantastic. That's why I maybe maybe that's why subconsciously like no matter what kind of Resident Evil movie they make I'll probably never like it because unless it's exact unless it's like Predator it has to have the feeling and tone of Predator or else I probably won't dig it because <laughs> uh, I'm those two things are so intertwined now uh, because of my experience with the game the first time I played it that I was just like oh wow this is this is never gonna not seem like Predator to me. <laughs> um. Fire is a man's tool, lady. <laughs> she was the master of unlocking, as Barry said. That's right. At least she didn't end up a Jill sandwich. <laughs> Have you ever seen um? There's this great guy on YouTube. He's been in the, the chat here a few times. I think he's been really busy with work, which is why we haven't seen any videos from him. But he has a channel. It's called Where's Barry, and he's like at Where's Barry on like Instagram and Twitter, uh, or at Where's Barry B. I think because one of them was already taken. Uh, but just a super nice guy, and. Uh, his favorite character, I think, or he jokes that his favorite character is Barry Burton, and it's just the best. There's also this guy in Canada, um, and I'm blanking on his name. Um, oh, I can't remember his name. He actually does video game and movie reviews of all the Resident Evil games and movies, and uh, he actually he goes by um, he dresses as Barry when he does it, and he even does the voice. He's like, "Is that you, Jill?" And he's like, and then he like looks over, and it's the DVD of like the the final chapter of Resident Evil and he goes oh he's like what what is it and he like picks it up and he's like I hope this isn't Chris's blood <laughs> and then he like reviews the movie it's very funny uh, especially if you're a Resident Evil fan you'll you'll really dig it oh wait oh that's right we can actually go in here I forgot the I was like oh I need the blue key to go through this room it's actually the blue key is used inside this room so I can actually go in here and grab a couple things Yeah, there's the grenade launcher and the grandfather clock. Appears to be broken. It stopped ticking altogether. And I think it's like a few minutes to midnight or, th or to 3 p.m. or something like that. We got to put acid rounds in this thing. So if anyone sees acid rounds, let me know.
Awesome. Oh, there's my dog. My dog just barked. Jomily, what is up? Um, Y'all can't handle fire. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like super bad and I love it, but it was a playing Silent Hill 1 was like, damn, this is worse than I remember. Then I played RE1 again and was like, yep, that's what I thought Silent Hill was better voice acting. <laughs> Vo yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, and also Silent Hill's that voice acting is intentional. That's the key. A lot of people are like, oh, it has really bad voice acting. I'm like, but it's intentional. It's, it's, it's supposed to come across that way. Resident Evil actually was too. It's supposed to sound like a bad B horror movie. I mean, the people they had that played the the voices in the first Resident Evil game weren't even full time actors. They were just, I think, just Americans that they found in Japan. They're like, "Hey, you're American. Will you do this voice?" <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's not a lot to it. Um, Jomily, what is up? I opened your gift earlier. I was trying to wait for you, um, so I apologize. Uh, I'll have the videos uploaded uh, as soon as possible to Twitch and stuff. But I opened your um, your Swamp Thing box. Thank you so much. That was really amazing. I wanted to do it on uh, here on stream. Um, I did. Oh, I opened. I should say I opened it right before the stream um, and s stared at it for like an hour. And then I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta show this off on, on stream. So, uh, thank you so much for that. And the digital graphic novel, the, the Swamp Thing comic. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody, send John Lee some love. Another great streamer on here. She's just starting up. Uh, she's been streaming for like a month or two now, right, John? Uh, but definitely show her some love. She is good people. All right. Let's get this minute hand in here. So this will be the end of this episode, uh, episode three, and then after this, no more presents. We will just uh, hang out and play Resident Evil together and talk. So, all right, we got another gift here to me. Uh, I was thinking one of these might be for Echo, but I think they're all labeled to me. And I think it's another piece of clothes, which is uh, clothing, which is awesome. I could definitely use some of that. And like I said, I do not buy clothes for myself. Very rarely do I. Oh, it's Star Wars. Uh-oh. Ooh, sweet. That's a cool shirt. Check this out, guys. Uh, boom. Look at that. Shazam. I think it's like BB-8 or like a planet. Yeah, it's like it's like BB-8, Jakku, Tatooine. That's pretty sweet. Does it say Last Jedi on it? It does say Last Jedi on it. Nice. Extra large. I don't want to be wearing extra large anymore, man. I'm already down. I'm already down almost a whole size. I've been uh, doing the Venom vlog thing. I think I've lost... I'm down to 201. We started, actually, a lot of people don't know this. I actually started the Venom vlog really at 212. I was at 212 pounds. But then by the time I we started doing it full time, like the second episode, a whole month had passed and I had already lost four pounds at that point. So when I started the second episode, I was like, all right, 208 is going to be what our starting weight is. And then we'll try to lose 20 pounds from 208 and get down to like 188. So um, yeah, so I'm actually down to uh, 201 already. So that's in just in the, uh, this month and a half or whatever we've been doing it um last jedi another awesome shirt thank you alex oh good and it's black too so i can wear it to work that is great sweet yeah like i said i don't buy myself a lot of clothes anymore i remember right before just league came out i went to like walmart and i saw shirts for like six dollars and i bought three of them and i thought i was like look at me buying clothes <laughs> and it was just like seven dollar comic book nerd shirts um oh what's this it says to me, but it has an ornament of a dog. I think I'll hang that on the tree back here. Actually, I should probably put this on. Here we go. Get my Christmas tree going. Um, yeah, sweet shirt. Yeah, right? That's awesome. Oh, yay for progress with the blogs. Thank you. Um, I like putting the puzzles in Resident Evil franchise. Yeah, definitely. I think everybody has a love here with the puzzles in Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Um, definitely Resident Evil. All right, what do we got here? Sweet, what shirt is it? Oh, a work shirt. I have to wear black at work. And, oh, darn it, it's short sleeve though. Oh, man. And it's an extra large. I'm going to have a lot of baggy clothes very soon. Uh, but this is awesome. This is a really nice shirt, actually. Um, so I can't wear short sleeve shirts at work because of my tattoos. Uh, but this is nice, though, because I actually talked to Alex about that I don't really have any like dressy, like even casual dressy type shirts uh, because I, I sometimes I get invited to functions and I'm like, uh, I'm not going to go. And people are like, oh, why not? And I'm like, because uh, I don't have the proper attire. <laughs> um, so yeah. All right. Last gift. 
Deadeye, what is up? How are you, dude? Welcome. Hugs and kisses. Deadeye, what's up? Uh, as a Sue, dude. As a Sue, dude. What? Angel, how are you? Angel, welcome to the stream. Everybody, send some love to these two. Also great streamers, great people, great human beings. Ooh, and I think this is, I think I know what this is. This is, uh, remember the other one we got was the, um, like the, um, like a splitter. So it had like a bunch of, it was like a, a strip, power strip with multiple outlets on it. This is what I needed. I needed an actual extension cord. Because like I said, my room, it's small and it's like shaped almost like a square, but that whole wall is useless. There's no outlets over there. And this whole wall only has one outlet. That wall behind me has one outlet and that one over there has zero. So I have like two, out two outlets. Oh my God. I have two outlets in this room. So to get something like this and the power strip is means I can actually rearrange this room to a different style and put things in different places. So that way I don't have to, cause I'm kind of scrunched in the corner, like right on the other side of this, we're behind the camera and stuff. There's, um, my desk with my computer and then there's the, the closet and then over here is my bed which is like six feet away from me and then and that goes all the way to the wall and then i have this like two feet behind me so it's like or a foot behind me now so it's like i'm so cramped in here like air doesn't really get back here either so yeah i um i'm gonna definitely use this to my advantage get everything positioned in a spot where i could actually have maybe some air circulating in here and i can feel it so i'm not like sweating my face off during streams um but yeah thank you guys thank you guys for watching this episode um if you're watching later on youtube or twitch make sure you follow me subscribe all that fun stuff i have links to all my other stuff down below so definitely come check us out on twitch if you're watching on youtube and on youtube if you're watching us on twitch uh everyone who's here tonight thank you all so much i love y'all faces i'll see you in the future peace